I definitely thought if Asus is calling me, I should give them more than, you know, your standard computer case with Omni's head on the side. The creative process kind of took me to be a little bit extreme. The creative process for Omni started with a sketch. Uh, I used a few reference pictures I found online. One picture that stood out was Omni from the waist up holding the gun, to which then I thought, well, putting the graphics card in the gun would be cool. So I threw that down on a piece of paper and kind of worked out where to put the rest of the parts. Really, when you think about PC building, there's like three main types, air-cooled, AIO, and custom water-cooled loops. And for most people, you know, your needs are met within those three categories. Especially the custom water-cooled uh, EK offers a really great range of stuff to meet your needs and cool your computers amazingly. But when you really want to step out of the box, working with a company like I2R and incorporating a CNC machine into your shop, into what you do, can totally bring your builds to the next level. I bought my I2R back in December, but I'd had my eye on it for about a year. I started seeing them being used by other modders in the community. A barrier to this stuff is the learning curve of how do I get it going, how do I get it started, you know, what do I need to, to actually make something. But with my I2R machine, I purchased it in December, it was delivered in January, and on the day that I set it up, I was making something. Every day I've turned on my CNC since, I've been able to make something. Some of my favorite things about the I2R machine specifically would be the hold down system. It comes with a set of clamps that are excellent, and I haven't had a problem holding down you know, any materials I've gone to cut. And it's got a very powerful spindle. Uh, mine's got the two horsepower spindle. I've been able to cut through aluminum, acrylic, wood, different types of wood, oak, pine, anything, and it, it's given me no issues. As I got machining the parts, I started out with pine. But as I got going on the project... I respect pine, I respect walnut, I respect oak, doesn't matter. You, you gotta remember, I'm building like a four foot tall giant mouse robot. So I switched the parts from pine to oak because it's a harder, stronger wood. I also used cast acrylic. The biggest piece is an inch thick, which the I2R handled no problem. What I built with that is a, a water cooling reservoir. So the project is custom liquid cooled using all EK parts. But I did want to show what the I2R can do with cast acrylic. So that's why I made the reservoir. And it's a good example of what you can do with the I2R when you really want to customize you know, the cooling or your custom distro plates, reservoirs, pump blocks, things like that. Uh, to run a CNC, you just need a laptop. And something great about the I2R is it has a built-in laptop stand. For this project, ASUS sent me the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16. Uh, with the CNC, there's two programs. The first one's vCarve, and that's where you design your, your cut to be made, and then you export that as G-code to UCCNC, which is what the CNC itself can read. And a great thing about the Zephyrus Duo is to have the dual screens open. I could have both programs open, which allowed me to make sure everything would run smoothly uh, throughout my, my project. So I used my CNC to also make a radiator stand for this project, but there is a lot more to it. I also used foam, and I had to use my 3D printer for a, a majority of this thing, for the big head on this machine, the body, uh, the gun, and I2R is actually making a 3D printer as well, which is really cool. Designing and building this project was one thing, but designing it so that it could be taken apart and transported and put back together easily to be on display and used at different gaming events brought on a whole other set of challenges. Trust me, I'm an engineer. For example, the legs, you can take them off uh, by four pins. The hand goes on with a piece of Velcro and, and the gun, I actually almost dropped it at one point and a part of it did break and I had to rebuild it and refix it. The most challenging was the head. Like if that thing was solid, it'd be like 40 pounds. So I had to make it hollow. Uh, so then kind of you, you run into, you know, is it gonna be structurally sound? And how can I make it removable from the body? So I had to print the head in about like 17, 18 pieces, glue them together, make sure everything fit. And then where it didn't fit, uh, I was able to use foam to kind of accommodate you know, for the different clearances and what I needed to make it more uniform. It was like playing Lego. Ah! That moment of seeing Omni with the parts actually installed was when I was finally like, yes, love this project. Because before that, it was quite scary. <laughs>
The sketches are done, the pieces are milled, I've sanded everything, I've painted everything, I have the components. The time has finally come to bring Omni to life. Let me